Welcome in to the latest episode of Betting the Pitch. I'm your host, The Real Underscore G Warner. It is Saturday, November 30th, just barely here in the East Coast of the United States. Uh, and I'll be going through tonight's uh, soccer card for this entire weekend is uh, more accurate uh, as I scramble to figure out where the heck my uh, YouTube page just went uh, as I am trying to go live on every streaming platform possible. Uh, thank you, of course, for your support wherever you're watching. If you're on YouTube at the real underscore G Warner or Instagram at the real underscore G Warner, I really appreciate that. If you are uh, somewhere else, maybe uh, listen to this afterwards on uh, on I think it would probably be uh, Spotify at, at called Betting the Pitch or on the same Betting the Pitch on. Uh, Apple Podcasts. Appreciate you there as well. And now I have the link and now I can stop stalling. It is posted on my Twitter. It's out there. If anyone wants to jo join live, uh, feel free to, to fast forward or rewind, get where you're trying to go. And it is now time to get to, to this podcast. So we're 13 and three or last 16 episodes uh, putting out an ultimate best bet. So what I do is I pick my favorite bet from each of the leagues, uh, England, Spain, Italy, Germany, and France, and then uh, ultimately uh, pick my favorite one from all of them, put it up on Instagram and on YouTube at the Real Underscore G Warner on both those platforms, and then uh, let's see if we can get to 14 and 3. I'm a little behind with a huge uh, college basketball slate this week with all the Feast Week tournaments, but uh, we will be catching up as we go and trying to deliver some more winners your way. So we'll start in England, like I said, where the money is. And uh, for the first matchup, we don't have an early game, thank God. Uh, but we'll start with Brentford hosting Leicester City. Currently, Brentford a one-goal favorite at home. All the juice on Leicester away from home. Totals three on this one. Juice a little bit more to under than to over. So Leicester City just parted ways with Steve Cooper. Um, that should mean that they can't get much more conservative than they were under him. Though kind of a weird firing. I don't know that anyone really expected his sacking, but it happened. Um, and where do Leicester go from there? We'll see. Uh, because there's the... Uh, I guess, mythical, mythological um, new manager bounce, which does seem to, to to work a little bit. A lot of the Leicester players, I don't think they were giving less than 100%. I think it was probably some sort of thing with uh, Steve Cooper internally, which seemed to happen at Nottingham Forest, the big rival of Leicester City as well. Uh, but with that all said, Brentford is a one-goal favorite. just doesn't feel like the right thing. Uh, they did get Christian Norgaard's red card suspension overturned. He should be back and available for this matchup, and he's very important in their midfield. Uh, but I think that will help the Leicester City uh, total stay under, uh, maybe not help Leicester City because they'll have to, to worry about him uh, both offensively and I think really defensively he's an important piece to it. But I think my biggest interest in this one is under three, but I also lean to the Leicester City full goal of insurance away from home. Move next to Crystal Palace, hosting Newcastle, calling Palace a quarter goal underdog at home with a little bit more juice. Over under is two and three quarters and it is juiced pretty heavily to under right now, as it should be. Newcastle coming off a, a clean sheet, getting shut out, uh, at home against West Ham United of all teams, uh, two corner kick goals, I think it was, and that's kind of what did it on Monday night. Quick turnaround for Newcastle relatively, but uh, this is a big step for them going on the road where they've struggled. They've been playing a lot better this season uh, than they did last year, but I think that's also uh, as a response to lowered expectations. Crystal Palace have been really bad. They're still in the uh, relegation zone right now in the Premier League, and that's not anywhere near how well they were playing end of last season. But at this point, I think the big question is what can Crystal Palace do uh, to score goals? Because we haven't seen a lot of them. Uh, I don't know that Eberechi Eze will be available for this matchup. He's been gone for a while. Uh, selling Michael uh, Olise to Bayern München has certainly not helped Crystal Palace goal scoring, and they've been really trying to figure out how to play without him. I'm a believer in Alva Glasna, the manager of previously from the German Bundesliga, all over the place at Wolfsburg and Eintracht Frankfurt when they won the Europa League. I, I just think ultimately... Um, this is going to be a tight match. It's going to be low scoring. And Crystal Palace are really good at home, right? A big home crowd advantage. And I think we see that in this matchup. So really like Crystal Palace getting that quarter of a goal at home uh, as a draw will win you some of a bet and also lean under two and three quarters. I just don't think that Newcastle will go away from home and score many goals. Um, don't really know why they score them so many at home anyway. Uh, but certainly don't see, see that happening away from home. Moving next to Wolves hosting Bournemouth, coming off a, a big win for them, especially playing all fullbacks. Essentially, they had no center backs available besides Tolti. Um, 
Bournemouth come in as as a pretty, I mean, a decent favorite uh, right now with all the juice on the Bournemouth side. Uh, maybe this moves to Wolves a quarter goal underdog. That's certainly something I'll be looking forward to uh, and certainly be looking for. Uh, totals two and three quarters in this one, juice all the way to over. We might get to three, and I'd be looking for that as well. Uh, the days of backing Bournemouth as an underdog just seem to be gone, unfortunately. Uh, I think they have proven that they deserve uh, the respect that they're getting, which is nice, but... Uh, I'm certainly looking for a little bit different of a scenario, I got to say, and uh, fear that uh, Bournemouth's days of being a home underdog are, are maybe not going to be around for a while unless they continue to struggle because they've not been playing great. Uh, I think there are some problems with their side right now and how they're trying to win matches and go about winning them. But at this point, uh, as a road favorite, I'm still interested in Wolves playing really well in front of their home crowd. I'll put the pick on my list, uh, though I'll certainly be waiting for a quarter of a goal before kickoff. And I'll lead to under two and three quarters, and I think it gets to three before kickoff as well because we did see a lot of goals in the Wolves win this past weekend and uh, I don't know that those things are expected moving forward moving next to still in the same window uh, last matchup of the early 10 a.m eastern time window on this Saturday November 30th we have Nottingham Forest a three-quarter goal favorite right now at home to Ipswich Town over under is two and a half this one juice just a couple cents more to over if you're looking for really good juice on soccer you need to check out that online sports betting.ag sister sites that will both give you uh, a really nice sign up bonus so you follow the link in the podcast description and Apple podcast Spotify and on YouTube. Go click that. Let me know you've done it and I'll make sure to follow up if things uh, go perfectly smoothly or not perfectly. Um, with that said, Nottingham Forest, the three quarter goal favorite at home. Uh, they've been coming down pretty quickly, precipitously from uh, how they started the season. We're up, I think, at one point in fourth place in the in Premier League table. Um, we'll see how they do, especially as a, a dominant type of favorite in this matchup against uh, Ipswich Town. Ipswich coming off. Uh, the debut match of Ruben Almorim, the new manager at Manchester United, fell behind in the first couple of minutes, but then held on, scored a goal to equalize, and then did a really good job of making it tough on Manchester United. I think we do that same sort of thing on the road at Nottingham Forest. I don't know that I trust Ipswich enough to want to play them without getting a full goal of insurance here, uh, but I'm still not really scared of a Nottingham Forest offense that is living and dying by Chris Wood. Didn't start in the last match last weekend. If things didn't go great for them, uh, I don't really see that stopping moving forward. So give me Ipswich. Uh, lean to the three quarters of the goal and lean uh, more strongly to under two and a half. As for the nightcap on Saturday, we have West Ham United hosting Arsenal coming off that big win. I already mentioned this podcast on Monday at Newcastle. Well, now they're at home and they get one of the best teams in the world with Arsenal coming into town. Arsenal, one and a quarter goal favorite with a little bit more juice on the home side right now. Over under two and three quarters juice all the way to over. I do think we'll hit three here and that's a key number in all Arsenal matches because they're great at keeping clean sheets and uh, clearly they can find a late goal whether it's referee aided or or something that might happen like they did against Nottingham Forest last weekend. Um, I think West Ham are going to be pretty good defensively and will be stuck in just the same way they were at Newcastle, especially at home for Arsenal. Uh, I don't believe that West Ham have changed anything. They just got a tall guy. They got a big header to take a lead and then we're able to hold on to it and then add on to it as well. Uh, I think the big question is how many can Arsenal score coming off Champions League midweek? Uh, I like all those setups for West Ham United under two and three quarter goals, uh, maybe three before kickoff. Uh, as we move to Sunday, uh, a big slate of matches as well, probably the bigger Sunday you could ever see, especially with the uh, closing match in the English Premier League this weekend. We'll start with Manchester United hosting Everton. Currently Manchester United, a one goal favorite at home with slightly more juice than Everton away from home. Over under is two and three quarters and is juice slightly more to under here. Um, finally, a Manchester United total below three. I uh, didn't know that we'd, we'd ever see it, but I guess um, eventually the market will realize they've gone under like every match for months now, it feels like. Um, Everton on the other side, coming off a goalless draw, I think the only one in the English Premier League this past weekend. Um, they've been not able to score many goals, and they've been keeping a lot of goals out. Jordan Pickford, a great fantasy Premier League asset at this point. I also have him teamed with Ashley Young, if you're into that sort of thing. Uh, certainly doesn't look great, but when they have a goalless draw, it's like the perfect scenario for rostering a goalkeeper and a defender. Uh, with that said, I think Everton is a one-goal underdog. I love that full goal of insurance. Um, we'll see if Alvarim can turn a bad lineup into to what he was doing at at, at uh, Sporting Club de Portugal in Lisboa or Lisbon, Portugal. Um, I, I just don't necessarily see that happening. I think it's got a, a long way to go. It's going to be a tough road for anyone at Manchester United with the expectations and especially with the marketplace treating them with this much respect in just his second official match. 
uh, our second Premier League match. Moving next in the same window, Chelsea hosts Aston Villa. Currently, Chelsea a three-quarter goal favorite with all the juice over under is three, juice all the way to over. Now, Chelsea aren't scoring a many, as many goals as they were early in the season. Cole Palmer can't couldn't have stayed that hot as he did. Uh, but the big question here is Aston Villa's road defense. They certainly don't score as well away from home, which makes me lean toward under three. But Chelsea are certainly going to cause some big problems for that Aston Villa high line. Uh, Villa's defense just isn't good enough. They don't have the good enough players right now to play in that back line, to play the strategy they, they do. Uh, but I don't think Unai Emery is going to really change that, especially not away from home at Chelsea. I think he's going to roll with what's been working for them. And I think they're uh, changes are in due order. Um, so I don't really know that I want much to do with this one besides maybe an under three. And it looks like three and a quarter will be uh, achieved for kickoff, but we'll see if it comes back, back down to three. Um, I just don't know. There's a lot I want to do here other than fading Aston Villa. And I don't want to do that with a big home favorite moving next to Tottenham hosting Fulham in this last of the early uh, eight 30 Eastern time window in England. We'll start Tottenham, a three quarter goal favorite at home right now with more of the juice over under is three and a half juice really heavily to under um, Fulham have been scoring a ton of goals this year. They've been playing really well. Uh, their loss last weekend didn't make a lot of sense, but things happen, I guess. Um, Tottenham on the other side, I don't know how they balance coming off a thrashing of Manchester City away from home uh, last weekend and then seeing how um, stable they can be, especially after Europa League on Thursday midweek. Um, Fulham's the side I want here. I think I want to see a full goal of insurance before I get involved with fading a Tottenham offense. It's been pretty hot. I think Fulham aren't really a defensive side that's going to shut down Tottenham. So I think that full goal of insurance is important in what's likely a high-scoring game. Uh, as for the last matchup, the biggest one of the weekend, really the biggest one, I think, across all of the top five European soccer leagues covered on betting the pitch. You can find me on Spotify and on Apple podcasts under that betting the pitch, but also at the real underscore G Warner across all social media platforms. Uh, with that said, Liverpool, a half a goal favorite at home to Manchester city with all the juice right now, after climbing from a quarter goal underdog, now up to half a goal underdog as Liverpool are clearly getting bet. Total is three on this one juice almost all the way to over. Um, I don't really see a ton of goals in this matchup. A lot of times when really good teams come together, there's a big fight for the possession of the ball rather than uh, goal scoring opportunities. Uh, and I think Manchester City are, are very likely to go away from home and try to be as pragmatic and un Pep Guardiola like as possible. But also, I think Liverpool will be very conservative. That's how they've played under Honor Slot. And I just feel like this price is so right to back Manchester City get a half of a goal, though it's hard to certainly stomach right now on their big losing streak. But also, I lean to under three, not seeing a lot of goals in that matchup. Uh, as for the best bet on this episode, uh, which will then uh, come for the ultimate best bet, I got to select one from each of the leagues across all of Europe that we're covering on this episode. I'm going to go with that West Ham United under two and three quarter goals. I would love for it to be three, but I don't have that yet at Bet Online. Uh, and that's what we're using on this uh, this year's episodes. So uh, we'll go with that and uh, see if we could find uh, another winner to add to that lofty gaudy 13 and three record so far this season moving now to spain we'll go to la liga with barcelona hosting las palmas in the early matchup on saturday really odd to see barca playing in this early window on saturday especially after coming off a champions league match midweek but barca they're two and a half goal favorites with all the juice right now on the road team las palmas surprisingly over under is four juice a little bit more to over one of the bigger totals you'll see in la liga i mean it literally is more than doubling the next matchup we'll talk to in terms of its total. Uh, Las Palmas, they used to play a Barca light style or basically a Barcelona style, trying to possess the ball just without the talent. Um, this time, this is going to be a rude awakening, potentially, but I, I do feel that we've seen Las Palmas play a lot more competitively after they sacked their manager and brought in a new one. Uh, I don't know that that's, so much has changed there other than maybe getting a little bit of, of rub of the green, a little good fortune. Um, but this is going to all be tough to go into Barcelona and try to find a way to keep them out of their net. Um, fours are a gigantic total, certainly bigger than I made it and way bigger than I expected. Uh, I'll lean to Las Palmas getting four goals of insurance to try to lose less than four nil. Um, of course, if Las Palmas score here, then that's a big problem for the under, but certainly be great for the uh, plus two and a half. They're receiving gigantic numbers. La Liga clearly giving no respect and no hope for Las Palmas in this matchup. But if they're playing their best, I think an under four is worth a look. Moving next to Alaves, so saying Leganes. Currently, Alaves, a half a goal favorite in the Basque country. Uh, almost all the juice right now. Over under is one and three quarters. As I mentioned, less than half of that Barcelona total. Uh, it's one and three quarters right now, juice 
just all the way to over. Uh, and we did have, I think, a Friday match go off for the one and three quarters total as well. Um, like I said, their newly promoted side haven't scored any goals. Olives are up a couple seasons ago, and the team's names literally sound exactly like right now uh, at this hour to me. But uh, I'll be looking for, I mean, like is getting a half of a goal feels a little bit interesting just because I don't really trust Olives. They are better at home, though. I think my biggest interest is that total, but I don't have two, and that's the lowest I'll go, even in La Liga, where it's impossible to find a goal without the uh officials really helping out with the penalty uh moving next to espanol hosting celta vigo currently espanol a quarter goal underdog at home with more juice over under is two and a half and this is one juice all the way to under um espanol have looked really really poor lately it's kind of no way to get around that got smacked around had their uh post-game press conference or post-game interviewee uh from uh espanol come out and just talk about how awful and how terrible uh their first 30 minutes were um I think we see a response there, especially at home. But Celta Vigo have been playing really well. Came back from 2-0 down to draw Barcelona in a big match last weekend. I don't think anyone or really a lot of people expected that to happen, but it did. Um, I think the big question is how does Celta handle that road and how do they handle that result going on the road now? Uh, I'm interested in Espanol as a home underdog. I think I'm more interested in under two and a half. But there's got a, there's a lot I need to feel a lot better about for backing Espanol and under here. So it might be one of those I let go and hope for a goalless draw. Uh, or actually, I'd probably be pissed in that scenario. Uh, moving to the last matchup on Saturday, Real Valladolid hosts Atletico Madrid, coming off a blasting of Sparta Prague away from home in the Champions League. Surprised all around to see that. I think they won 6 0. Uh, Valle to lead a one and a quarter goal underdog though at home with almost all the juice over under is two and a half juice more to the under, uh, Valle to lead are I mean, just one of those yo-yo clubs that are playing better. They're improving. And I think they're becoming a lot more defensive playing now with three center backs as opposed to a four man back line. That's helping them to prevent goals from scoring. And that's a big deal and something they needed to do because they were essentially losing every match from one, from drawing one, one to losing a, a late goal to lose two, one or conceding late to lose a win. And that's a big deal for them trying to stay in La Liga. Uh, I'm interested in Vital Lead getting a goal and a quarter at home, and I lead to under two and a half as well. I think we're seeing about as much as Atleti can do, and hopefully they use other goals in Champions League on the road in Prague this week, midweek. Uh, moving to Sunday, we'll start with Villarreal hosting Girona. Currently Villarreal, a half a goal favorite at home with more of the juice. Over under is three, juice really heavily to under. Villarreal matches have been scoring a, a ton of goals again this season. They started off that way and then had a big under slump. Um, good for for uh, at the real Scorgy Warner, of course. But uh, since then, I've, I've been scoring more goals and came back from 2-0 down on the road to Sasuna, which is a big surprise, but were really aided by a ridiculous penalty, I felt, uh, late in that matchup. But welcome to La Liga. Ridiculous penalties are us. Um, Girona on the other side, they've been great and somehow found a way into Champions League, but have not been healthy enough to really perform at that level. Uh, they have been seeing some better results lately. Maybe some health has returned to the side, but I think still some big names are missing. Uh, I don't really like them as a half of a goal underdog until I feel a little bit more comfortable about how they're playing. And uh, certainly the the desire and how to play these matches doesn't want to really fit into that under three that we're getting, but it's a pretty big total in the Spanish La Liga. So I'm interested in that under three as we speak. Uh, moving next to Real Madrid hosting Hitafe, coming off their trip to Liverpool and Champions League midweek. Real Madrid, a goal and a half underdog, excuse me, goal and a half favorite. That'd be hilarious. Real Madrid being a goal and a half underdog, but Real Madrid goal and a half favorite at home. Uh, Hitafe with all the juice over under is two and a half juice pretty heavily to under right now. Uh, big question are uh, how many goals Real Madrid score? Um, of course, if you see them scoring two, Hitafe are unlikely to score themselves. You could still hit the under. The Hitafe side would lose. The big question, though, is that where their kit almost forgot about literally until you see the logo just in the reflection. Um, the big question is, is how many goals can Real Madrid score? Um, at this point, I think this will be a low scoring matchup, but I they probably want to see that push on three um, just because I feel like the Real Madrid defense is so banged up that Hitafe are unlikely to really do much to it or to threaten it much. But at the same time, uh, one goal from Hitafe and then all of a sudden this total is in big, big trouble. Um, lean to under two and a half, but I think I'm going to wait and see this line climb. Hopefully it will. 
Uh, those currently the juice is pointed towards under. Uh, moving next to Rio Vallecano, hosting Athletic Club Bilbao. Currently Rio, a pick em right now, despite playing really poorly uh, in the last few weeks or months. Uh, Athletic Club coming off Europa League midweek. They are a pick em with all the juice. Over under is two, just all the way to over. So I'm going to stick with and, and stick to backing uh, Rio Vallecano at home at Vallecas. Uh, part of Madrid where they seem to play better and they use a small pitch to their advantage, a uh, big crowd advantage because all the, the, the fans or supporters are right on uh, the pitch. And that's a big deal. Uh, certainly it's something that athletic club will be used to, but coming off a pretty big week of Europa league, plus also the, the Derby Vasco uh, against Raul Sociedad, which they won uh, one nil. I think we see a low scoring matchup. So lean to under two. We'll certainly wait to see if this hits two and a quarter before kickoff, but also lean to Rio at home as a pickup uh, to the Sunday night cap. Well, Real Sociedad speaking of hosting Real Betis currently Sociedad, a three quarter goal favorite at home with more juice on Real Betis away from home totals two and a quarter. And it's just more to the under right now. Real Betis have been uh, inconsistent. They've played without a striker all season, uh, including the one they have on loan at Celta de Vigo, who they just re-signed in a crazy fashion as he was visiting Real Betis for a La Liga match last weekend or two weekends ago. Um, on the other side, Real Sociedad, great at possessing the ball, have not been scoring goals, and that's a big problem as a big favorite and for uh, any sort of overplay. Uh, I lean to Real Betis getting that three quarters of the goal and also lean to under two and a quarter in this matchup on Sunday night. As we move to Monday, we have Sevilla hosting Osasuna. Currently Sevilla, a quarter goal favorite at home with all the juice over under is two and a quarter juice more to the over felt Sevilla. were very fortunate to, to take a lead against Raya Vallecano. And then uh, we're up a man and we're literally holding on for dear life. Uh, things are not good at Sevilla right now. Uh, Osasuna are significantly weaker away from home outside of Pamplona and outside of El Sadar, but I think they can go into Sevilla, make this a low scoring matchup and make this really hard on the home team to go get a victory. So I'll lean to Osasuna getting that quarter of a goal and I'll lean also to the under two and a quarter in that matchup as well. Uh, if you're not a member of my Patreon, check it out. Patreon.com slash the real underscore G Warner. Best spot for all my plays. Leans right up across all sports. Had a good close to Thursday and a big win on, on uh, the Raiders on Friday in the NFL. Uh, and then also, of course, have our NFL podcast coming out and every Tuesday night as we have one already published and out there covering all the standalone games and a bunch did as much as we could in the allotted time with a underscore snicker on this uh, platform channel, uh, betting the pitch on Apple podcasts and on Spotify at the real underscore G Warner on YouTube as well. Uh, and look out for the, the one minute reel that I'll hopefully be able to have cut for uh, Sunday's matchups in the NFL. Uh, as for the best bet in Spain, before I move to the Italian Serie A, I'm just going to keep going with uh, the the idea that Atletico Madrid are not a great goal scoring team. Uh, despite all the money they spent on their side, we'll see if they can do that against the Spanish league side, unlike one from Sparta Prague that uh, doesn't possess the ball whatsoever. So I'll go under two and a half in that matchup via the lead hosting Atletico Madrid. Uh, we'll move now to Italy and to Serie A, and I'll start with Como hosting Monza, an early matchup on Saturday morning here in the United States. Uh, currently, Como, a quarter goal favorite right now with all the juice, jockeying between half of a goal and a quarter goal favorite. Total is two and a quarter on this one, juice really heavily to under. Uh, I don't see a lot of goals in this matchup, but that's really because I don't really trust Monza to do much. Um, or excuse me, I, I don't trust Como to do much, the home favorite, uh, but that's probably giving away my uh, my sentiment on this matchup is I think Monza have been playing competitively. They've been in the league a bunch of years. Como have spent a ton of money, but they're newly promoted and they've had a really rough go of it so far. And I feel like they are ticketed to going back to Serie B. Uh, Monza getting that quarter of a goal, I like. I'll wait to see if this where this one settles because uh, it has been jockeying between a quarter of a goal and a half. Uh, as for the total, I lean under two and a quarter um, as I just don't really trust Como to do much offensively, though I don't trust them either at end of games, close games out, and that does certainly put a total in jeopardy. Uh, next, we'll go to Milan hosting Empoli. Currently, Milan a goal and a half favorite right now at home with all the juice on Empoli away from home. Totals two and three quarters, juice a little bit more to under. Uh, Empoli took a lead. We're in great position to win and hit the under two. Unfortunately, could not hold on, conceded a late goal and a, pen, uh, and a corner kick, excuse me, um, and now they go on the road to Milan for another tough battle. But I believe doing far better than expected. Look like they're on, off to a great start to stay in Serie A for another season. That's all they want while Milan are trying to win Champions League and Scudetto, amongst all other things as well, plus probably also Coppa Italia. 
Um, we'll see what Milan can deliver here, especially coming off a, a, a tough trip to Slova and Bratislava in uh, in Slovakia uh, this week for Champions League. I think that's going to put, put again put Empoli in a great position, lean to them getting a goal and a half, as that's a gigantic number considering how low scoring their matches have been. I think they've only scored 10 and conceded 10 so far this season and like 12 giornatas as they call them in, in Italy. Uh, lean to under two and three quarters in that matchup as well. Uh, for the nightcap on Saturday, Bologna hosts Venezia. Currently Bologna, half a goal favorite with almost all the juice over under two and a quarter. Juice very heavily to over right now. Uh, Venezia with a really tough, heartbreaking loss at home to Lecce uh, on Monday. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, or fortunately for them, Bologna had to play in Champions League. So uh, that should be a little bit more helpful, at least a little bit more rest for Venezia as they hit the road and go visit a team that played really well defensively qualified for Champions League, but really haven't scored goals in a lot of time. So uh, lean to Venezia under two and a quarter in that matchup on Saturday evening in Italia. Italia. I'll try to say Italy and Italia at the same time. Oops, it's late. Uh, moving to Sunday, we have Udinese hosting Genoa, coming off that late draw at Empoli. Uh, Udinese, half a goal favor right now, all the juice on Genoa. Away from home, over under is two and a quarter, and it's juice more to the under. Now, Genoa... They are um, a lot of expect expectations on them coming into the season. They've not delivered on those. Uh, they've been scoring more, I think, lately after a really slow start, but uh, sacked their manager, and a lot of things have changed there, of course. Udinese off to a great start. We're at one point leading Serie A. Uh, probably a lot of people are printing out those press clippings, saving those, framing those newspapers, because it's not, never going to happen again, most likely. But Udinese, I mean, they've been good this year. I don't know that I necessarily want to fade them just because Genoa have been playing so poorly. I think I leaned under two and a quarter as a bigger interest in that one. Uh, moving next to Parma hosting Lazio. Parma, who've been a great story coming up from Serie B. Um, they play an aggressive on for the front foot type of football, and that's worked for them, especially at home when the Giants have come to visit. Uh, but there's a little bit more tape on them, a little bit more of a scattering report that makes me a little bit worried for them, especially with how well Lazio have played. With that said, I'm interested in Parma because a home result is uh, enough to cover the spread for them right now. So give me that Parma getting three quarters of a goal. And I don't think I want to do too much with the total at three because uh, both these teams want to score goals. And that's not a great combo for an under. Uh, moving next to Torino, hosting Napoli. Currently Torino, a three-quarter goal underdog at home with all the juice. Over-under is two and a quarter. Juice really heavily to under. Napoli, I mean, they're leading the, the table right now, top of the table, Serie A leaders, uh, and that certainly has helped them. They don't have any international distractions. Torino on the other side, they're just trying to hold on for dear life. They've been playing really poorly. Uh, very low juiced, uh, very low total. Also very juiced at the two and a quarter. Minus 126, I'm seeing right now at bet online. Probably two just a full two at, at most other places. I'll be waiting to see this this juice improve and see what happens with this total. My biggest interest right now is under two and a quarter. Torino hosting Napoli. Uh, moving to the next match on Sunday, Fiorentina hosts Inter Milan. Currently Fiorentina, a quarter goal underdog at home. All the juice on Inter away from home. Total is two and three quarters. She's really heavily to under. Um, I don't know what to say about this one. Fiorentina have been scoring a ton of goals off very efficient, like low XG for, for the goals they've been scoring type of numbers. Uh, slow start to the season, but have been really hot lately. The problem is that they have Conference League midweek while Inter Milan are playing Champions League and getting a lot more rest. Uh, certainly going on the road to the Frankie will, will be a big difference in, in, in situation here. And I'll certainly benefit a Fiorentina side, which I'm sure rotated for uh, in preparation for this matchup as they have all season. Uh, so I'll lean to Fiorentina and getting that quarter of a goal, but that is about as cheap as you'll see Inter Milan in any sort of matchup that is in Serie A away from home at a tough place to play. Only a quarter goal favorite still though, says a lot about how, uh, maybe the Italian market is expecting the best from Fiorentina in this matchup. Uh, as for the total, don't have much of a feel for it. So uh, probably leave two and three quarters alone. Uh, but I'm very curious to see where the line will end up moving. And at three, I probably look at the under. Uh, last but not least on Sunday, we have Lecce hosting Juventus. Currently Lecce, a three-quarter goal underdog at home with more juice on Juve away from home. Totals two and a quarter on this one, juice really heavily to under. That shouldn't surprise anyone. Uh, Juve have been scoring very few goals and have been exceeding, I think, only seven so far in Serie A this season. Bunch of goalless draws. They've been drawing a ton, and that's been a big problem for them, especially trying to win the Scudetto. Uh, I think Lecce, under a new manager, will be about as stubborn as you can be. We'll see what the home crowd delivers and how many Juve supporters are in it, have infiltrated their way in. But I'll lean to under two and a quarter in that matchup as well as Lecce if they move to one goal, full goal underdog. 
Uh, last but not least, Monday, we have Roma hosting Atalanta, both pl clubs playing in Europe midweek. Roma currently a quarter goal underdog at home right now, a little bit more juice than Atalanta away from home. Total is two and a half in this one, juice pretty heavily to over. Um, we haven't seen Roma score goals at all. Uh, we haven't seen them play well either this season. They're on their third manager. It's not been great. I think the Roma side is probably the interest because they're at home and have a big crowd behind them on a Monday night. Uh, but I think my biggest interest is under two and a half just because it goes alongside with Roma struggling to score, playing well at home, and that meaning that Atalanta might struggle themselves. Uh, as for my best bet in Syria and Italy, I'm going to go with that Bologna uh, Venezia under two and a quarter goals as I just I think that's going to be really tough for Bologna to come off of Champions League and score a bunch so I'll go under two and a quarter there as my best bet in Italia as we move now to the French League uh, and then we'll get to the German Bundesliga and ultimate best bet get out of here and I'll be waking up in a very short amount of time to try to go through all these matchups as well we'll start with Stade Rene hosting Saint Etienne currently ran a one goal favorite at home with almost all the juice over under is two and three quarters juice all the way to under. So I guess we're seeing uh, some buyback, not expecting a ton of goals in this matchup. Renner, a team I want to fade. And I like the idea of being against them as a one goal favorite. Uh, I don't know that Saint Etienne's defense has been good enough for me to trust, but they got a big win last weekend, kept a clean sheet against Montpellier. Um, big response after, uh, I guess they played pretty well defensively on the road at Lyon in the big rivalry derby match as well. So, um, those are good signs and, and Saint Etienne need to show that as they're trying to stay up after a very historic French club was relegated a couple seasons ago. Uh, as for Rennes, they were really dominating a lot of, uh, French football and have been putting big players across all of Europe. Well, they've kind of run out of that talent. Um, so the more I talk about it, the more interested I am in Saint-Étienne and also in the under two and three quarters. Uh, moving next to Stade Brestois, hosting Strasbourg, currently expressed a quarter goal favorite at home, a little bit more juice. Over under is two and a half, and it's juice slightly more to under. Um, unfortunately, Strasbourg, they, they are making critical mistakes that change matches every single match they play. Um, I think the last two I've seen, they've had uh one nil leads that were then squandered and then lost matches on big defensive mistakes including an own goal this past weekend um i, I think i'm I, I was really i love the talent that strasbourg have but unfortunately uh they don't have enough uh of a refined talent at this point it's basically all bad sugar not any of the refined sugars uh and it's not something i want to deal with at this point especially against the breast side who've looked very 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 good. I, I don't know if there's a better way to put it. They've looked great. They've performed really well in Champions League. They did have a tough trip to uh, Barcelona midweek. I guess for that reason, I'll put Strasbourg on my list getting a quarter of a goal, but it's a very cheap price, and I just, I, I'd like to stay away from it if I possibly can on Saturday morning. Here, uh, we'll move next to PSG hosting Nantes in the nightcap on Saturday evening uh, in Paris. Currently, PSG a one and three quarter goal favorite with all the juice over under is three and a quarter, juice more all the way to under right now. Um, not in big trouble. I don't know if Antoine Colbore had survived this loss last weekend, uh, but unfortunately things are not going well. Nolte have been, uh, got off to a great start this season, but goals have dried. Defense has made some big mistakes and they've been really unsure about who they're playing, kind of moving away from the Palois, Castelletto, uh, like spine in their center of defense. And now they're trying to figure out what the heck to do. Uh, not a great situation to go into PSG. Yes, coming off Champions League and a trip to Bayern München, but still, uh, I think there's a lot of issues there, especially on the Nolte side. So I don't really know there's much for me to do on that nightcap in France. We move to Sunday, Montpellier hosts Lille. Coming Montpellier, half a goal underdog at home. All the juice on Lille away from home. Totals two and three quarters. Use more to the over. And this is a big question. How much does Lille have in the tank after playing a, a, an important Champions League mid match midweek now they go on the road to a really struggling Montpellier in their club's 50th season trying to celebrate it by not going to to to, to Ligue 2 um and my interest here based on the situation is to back Montpellier I am very afraid of back uh, of fading excuse me uh Lille at this point though so not sure that I want much to do there uh lean to I guess to under as well but I think that's really just hoping that Lille are not playing their best on this Sunday matchup which 
I mean, with Champions League, it's about as much as you can rest, even though it's the earliest start in Ligue 1 this Sunday. Moving next to Lyon, hosting Nice, uh, two clubs playing in Europa League. Lyon, a half a goal favorite right now at home, a little bit more juice over under is two and three quarters, juice all the way to over. Um, Lyon have been playing a lot better. I think they're a better team. They're at home. Uh, it doesn't give me a lot of reason to play Nice and it doesn't really make me interested in the under two and three quarters here either. Uh, at three, maybe I'm a little bit more interested Uh, but honestly, I feel like Lyon are going to try to outscore everyone. I don't know their defense is great. Nice probably will go on the road and try to defend here. So if you want to back Nice, you maybe want to look to under in that matchup. Next, we go to Le Havre hosting Angers, a battle of very much fight relegation stricken, relegation fighting squads. Currently, Le Havre at home, only a quarter goal favorite with more juice on Angers, surprisingly away from home. Totals two and a quarter, juice more to the under. Le Havre have been playing well, getting results lately. Um, I don't know that it's been deserved or beautiful, uh, probably neither of those things, but ultimately they have, are, I mean, they look a lot better to me than Angers and are at home in this matchup. Angers look really cheap, which seems like the French market is very interested in backing them. Yes, they played well last weekend, but I don't think they were able to get any sort of point out of a, a, a trip on the road to Angers, uh, another team fighting relegation. So uh, I think I'll be waiting and seeing how well Angers play because this line is certainly suggesting that the market, the whole world is backing Angers in this matchup. Uh, last in that early window, or I guess middle of the day window in France on Sunday is Toulouse hosting Angers, two teams that can score goals. Toulouse, a three quarter goal favorite with more of the juice. Over under is two and three quarters and a juice more to the under here, surprisingly. Uh, I think my interest here is to all back all share getting that three quarters of goal. I'd love to see them move to a one goal underdog. doesn't really look like the juice will point us there, but maybe we'll get there. Total is two and three quarters. And I actually like over in that one. So Joe Dollar, there's your over in this episode. Uh, trying to get one for you in every podcast. Just kidding. Uh, but two over teams meeting certainly will make you want to lean that direction. Last but not least is the battle of uh, Monse and Monaco. And surprisingly to me, Monaco are a favorite on the road at the start of Rons Velodrome. Though I've, if you've been listening to this podcast, betting the pitch and Apple podcast and on Spotify or at the Real Underscore G Warner on YouTube, you certainly have heard me talking about how well Monse play away from home compared to how well they play at home. I'm not sure they play well in either place. They never seem to live up to the expectations, which are always way too high. Uh, but it's, it's saying something to me to see Monaco a, a favorite away from home. I also think they're a side that plays better away from home because they have less expectations. The Of course, odds makers uh, put in a, a home field advantage in Liga and really any competition, and Monaco don't get much support from their home crowd. But they are a good goal-scoring team, as are Marseille. I think the, the total at three feels like we could see some fireworks in this one as both want to outscore the other. Uh, but I got to say, I'm interested in Marseille say as a pick them at home uh, for my best bet in France in this weekend's episode. I'm going to go with that Senetien under two and three quarter goals, just backing that there's some success with that, that home team and how well they've been playing uh, defensively over the last few weeks. We'll see how many Bren can score. Cause I don't really trust the Ren offense. And we get to the Bundesliga for the last portion of this episode. Uh, let's go to Werder Bremen hosting Vafe Stuttgart coming off their Champions League match midweek. Currently Werder Bremen, a quarter goal underdog at home with all the juice over under is three juice more to the under. Um, Stuttgart are um, very talented, going to control this game. But Werder Bremen have been, I think, other than struggling to score goals at home, they've been pretty impressive. So I lean to that quarter of a goal at home, and I lean to under three as it goes along with Stuttgart controlling the ball but having trouble scoring away from home. Moving next to Leipzig, hosting Fafel Wussburg. Currently, Leipzig, a three-quarter goal favorite. She's split both ways. Totals two and three quarters. She's pretty heavily to over. Uh, I'll be waiting to see if we get to three in this one. I don't trust Wolfsburg to score goals. They're one of the most efficient offenses in the German Bundesliga because they score goals without earning them, I don't think. And uh, that's something I plan to bet a lot this season if I have that opportunity. Uh, right now, we don't have the three yet, but we'll be waiting to see that on Saturday morning here in the, in the United States. Um, but Leipzig, they've got a long way to go for me to trust their offense. And that's probably another reason to go under in that matchup. Moving next to sport called Freiburg, hosting Borussia Mönchengladbach. Currently Freiburg, a half a goal favorite right now at home with all the juice on Gladbach. And this number has been falling pretty quickly uh, down only in the 
Gladbach direction. Total is two and three quarters. She's pretty heavily to over right now. Now, Gladbach have not been good away from home for a while, but they look like they're a, a club that have kind of figured it out. They made some good signings. Frank Onora coming in from the French League, uh, I believe with uh, Rems or was it Brest? Anyway, um, he's been awesome. Uh, and Tim Kleindietz might be the signing of the German Bundesliga season. He's scoring goals every game. It seems like he's deserved more than he's had as well. Um, and I got to say, Sport Club Freiburg, cl club I follow closest in the German Bundesliga, they just haven't looked great to me. And I'm not as afraid of, bat of going against them, especially with a, a, a road draw uh, being uh, all I need to, to win a full bat. The big question, though, Gladbach has had really bad road splits for what feels like the entire time I've been following the Bundesliga, five or six years now. Um, but at this point, I think Gladbach are worth a look, especially away from home. So I'll put that half of a goal on my list. Moving next to football club Augsburg, they're hosting Waffel Bochum. Currently Augsburg, a three quarter goal favorite with a little bit more juice on Bochum away from home. Totals two and three quarters. This one she uses a split both ways. And I think that reflects a Bochum side that hired a new manager after sacking an idiot. And they've gone very defensive. And I think that's played out very well to the under ever since. Uh, I see no reason to change that. Bochum under two and three quarters my interest. I don't really have much interest in playing the road underdog, though I think it all kind of correlates to low goal scoring to potentially play Bochum as well. Um, I just don't trust Augsburg. They're going to try to literally give the ball to Bochum and have them make enough mistakes. And I think Bochum will play long balls and, and just won't let anyone near their goal as much as they can for the full 90 minutes. Uh, moving to the last matchup of this early window uh, on slot in the German Bundesliga, we have Union Berlin hosting Bayer Leverkusen. Currently Union, a three-quarter goal underdog at home with all the juice. Over-under is two and a half, juice a little bit more to over. Um, I'm still looking very much to be against Bayer Leverkusen. I mean, incredible that they were able to cover as a two-goal favorite last weekend, despite falling behind 2-0 after 20 minutes. Um, I honestly was feeling good about a 13-1 to underdog or 13.5-1 to underdog in Heidenheim. But uh, the nice part is there's a lot more defensive, uh, I think, ability in the Union side than there is in Heidenheim, who looked like they were a step slow or like a mile slow for a lot of the decisions that ended up scoring goals. Uh, Leverkusen had Champions League midweek. They're going to have to try to find a way to go into Union, into the, the east side of Berlin, and find a way to score goals. I don't think it's going to happen, so I lean to under and to Union getting three-quarters of the goal in that matchup. Uh, we'll move, last but not least on this Saturday is Der Klassiker in the top spiel position. Borussia Dortmund, are, they're moving between three quarters of a goal and one goal underdog at home to Bayern München. Total is three and a quarter in this one, and it's just a little bit more to under. We got a very expensive one right now available on Dortmund, and I think that's an important number to have. You really want that full goal of insurance if you're going to back Dortmund, and the place where you back them is at home. Uh, I lean to Dortmund getting that one goal. Uh, I think the total is is, huff, is is tough for me to predict because you really probably want to see an under uh, if you're going to back Dortmund as a, as a home underdog, but their gigantic price here, Bayern München coming off Champions League, Borussia Dortmund coming off Champions League. Uh, the nice part, though, is Dortmund are at home. That usually decides how things go. Um, last, but I guess, portion of this episode, but not least, is to get through the Sunday portion of the German Bundesliga card. We'll start with Mainz, Null Fünf, Hofzintiski, Hoffenheim. Currently, Mainz, a half a goal favorite at home with all the juice in Hoffenheim away from home. Total is two and three quarters in this one, juice all the way to over. Uh, Hoffenheim coming off Europa League midweek, their second match under their new manager, lured away from Sturm Graz in Austria. I have not been that impressed by him nor Austria's uh, Sturm Graz in Champions League, though clearly a different level. Um, and this is going to be a tough trip to go on the road to Mainz. Uh, I don't really trust Mainz to score a ton of goals. They did hit the over themselves by, alone uh, on the road last weekend at Kiel. Um, I think it was, yeah, I think it was at Kiel. Um, Holstein Kiel in the north of Germany, newly promoted side, which we'll get to. Uh, or I guess they played on Friday. Sorry, it's a Saturday podcast for Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Um, I think my biggest interest in this one is the under two and three quarters. We'll wait to see on Sunday if it is able to climb to that important, all important three. Uh, last but not least, we'll go to Football Club Heidenheim, hosting Eintracht Frankfurt. Currently, Heidenheim, a half a goal underdog at home with almost all the juice over under two and three quarters, which is pretty heavily to under. Uh, the only thing I can think of here is to play Heidenheim as a side, getting that half of a goal. I don't like the setup against the Eintracht Frankfurt youth, speed, pace, talent, all that sort of things up front. 
Uh, but I do like home underdogs, and that's my biggest interest there. Don't think I have much interest in the total, as I think that's going to be a very hard uh, one to get through. And so now we've reached and gone through all of the bettable options on this week's Bundesliga card, uh, French League on card, Serie A, Italy card, La Liga in Spain, and the English Premier League. So we are ready to give out some best bets and try to find some winners uh, and, and ultimately try to climb that ultimate best bet record from 13-3 and three, uh, to 14-3 and three after a winner with Juventus getting a quarter of a goal on the road last weekend at Milan. Um, I guess things I need to plug. So if you haven't listened to the NFL podcast, go do that with a underscore snicker. Uh, where there are pregame.com, college football, and college basketball podcasts out, uh, or college basketball will be posted before the players era tournament stuff happens on Saturday, November 30th. It's late night with the real underscore G Warner as always, but look out for that podcast and uh, apology. If you're looking at this video, I cannot keep my hair down. So it is what it is. And let's get into uh, our ultimate best bet. Actually, before I do that, I didn't give out the German Bundesliga pick, so I might as well do that. And that is Borussia Dortmund, a one-goal underdog at home to Bayern München. Okay, so for the ultimate best bet portion of the show, um, I, in case you haven't been listening this whole time or doing the 40 or so minutes we've been on, uh, I basically go through my favorite pick in each of the top five leagues in case you just joined on. Uh, and then I pick my favorite from each of the leagues. I go by one of those and I grade the podcast for that week by it. We're 13 and three so far this year. We're going to try to keep that 81% streak going. It's going to be hard, but we're going to try our best. So stick with us and let's do it. All right. It's time to time to hit place. So let's let's go. Hey, this is Real Underscore G Warner on Instagram, Patreon, Twitter, and on YouTube. This is the ultimate best bet. We're 13-3 and three year to date, 81%. Trying to keep that number going and improving, all going in the correct direction. I go through the top five European soccer leagues. I give you my best bets for each of the games, my biggest interest. But on this portion of the show, the ultimate best bet, I only select one from each country and one at the end of the episode. So for the English Premier League, I like West Ham under two and three quarter goals. In La Liga in Spain, I like Real Valladolid under two and a half goals. In Serie A in Italy, I like Venezia under two and a quarter goals in Ligue 1 in France. I like Saint Etienne under two and three quarter goals and the German Bundesliga and Der Klassiker. I like Borussia Dortmund, a one goal underdog at home to Bayern München. So now it's time for the ultimate best bet. We're 13 and three last 16, 81% on the season. Cause that's how long the season's gone so far. Let's go Borussia Dortmund plus one and Der Klassiker. I think we see a big inspired Borussia Dortmund event and Bayern München struggle away from home. That'll do it in this episode. Thank you all for tuning in. I hope you have a great, great evening. And uh, hopefully we'll see you bright and early tomorrow. And uh, make sure you hit subscribe, follow, and hit my Patreon, patreon.com slash surreal underscore G Warner.